So, the Conservative leadership have concerns about their leadership election's integrity. I mean, unusual, isn't it? You conspiracy theorists, Josh. Well, apparently the BBC and the Conservative Party are also conspiracy theorists because the BBC did an article about this titled Tory Leadership Contest Ballot Papers Delayed Over Security Fears. I mean, I, I thought Western democracy was pretty secure. I, I I'm thought it sure was incredibly I've seen, fortified. Yeah, I, I've seen plenty of uh, articles saying how, how great our democracy is. Well, apparently it's not as secure as we think. That's funny, isn't it? So I'm going to read a little bit from this article to give you a bit of the background of what's actually going on. So, ballot papers for the Conservative leadership election have been delayed in being sent out over security fears. The party said it had changed its plans for the contest, which will decide the next Prime Minister after consulting with security agency GCHQ. Uh, the Daily Telegraph reported that GCHQ had warned that hackers could change people's votes. I mean, I've, I've never heard of anyone mention that before. Um, Tory members deciding between Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak should get their ballot packs uh, this week, the party said. Around 160,000 Conservative members are due to elect Boris Johnson's successor with the winner announced on the 5th of September. It was initially planned that the voting process would have allowed members to choose whether to vote by post or online, and then, if they changed their minds, use the alternative method to cancel out their previous vote. I saw the Rishi Sunak camp very happy about this because Liz Truss is taking a nearly double... Uh, poll lead 60 something to 30 mm -hmm. something and they said oh actually having a later vote might advantage us because if Rishi Sunak comes off slightly better in the interim debates then people might cast their final ballot but now that the opportunity to change is gone as well um, seems that it's less people are going to be doing early voting and it's going to be a lot more locked in for a second there, I thought you were going to say that Rishi the money printer was going to be Rishi the ballot printer <laughs> I wouldn't allege go. that YouTube <laughs> Um, it carries on to say, but after the advice of the National Cyber Security Centre, part of GCHQ, the Conservative Party has decided to um, make changes to enhance security around the ballot process. In an email sent to members seen by the BBC, the Conservative Party said their voting packs uh, uh, was on the way but would arrive uh, with you a little later than we originally said because we're taking some time to add additional security to our ballot process. The email said that once the ballot company receives a postal vote, they will deactivate the members' online codes, reducing the risk of any fraud. Hmm. So yeah, seems reasonable enough, right? But the the article carries on and and get a load of the framing of this from the BBC. It's, it, this is a little aside, but it's important to point out just how slimy this is. So they say, Russia's efforts to interfere in the 2016 US presidential election were a wake-up call that... Other states were willing to do things like hack into people's accounts and leak information. Russian intelligence was even accused then of getting inside election systems, although there was never any evidence that they, were actu they actually changed any information. So we're going to make a totally unfalsifiable claim, even though it's been disproven many times. The Russian collusion allegations amounted to nothing more than well, they a spent a couple... conspiracy theory, isn't it? Well, yes, that they spent a couple hundred thousand on a few Facebook memes that were seen by absolutely no one. Oh, and then they were obviously involved in Hillary Clinton's team procuring the Steele dossier, which uh, amounted to literally nothing. But, of course, Russian collusion only goes one side. Mm -hmm. One aspect of the election integrity that they haven't mentioned, however, is something that I believe John spotted. Um, yeah. Both so, John and I were, were tweeting about this. I was due to discuss this on GB News, but they, they axed the segment because there were delays on the Dover ferries. Okay. Yeah. Gutting. That's that's more important than the the corruption of our potential prime ministerial election. Yes, apparently so. Um, so here, this is the uh, conservativesabroad.org website, and they're they're just talking about um, joining the conservatives abroad um, and whether they can vote in say leadership elections. And I'm just going to read a little bit from this, and this is quite concerning. So it says there are many conservatives. Uh, uh, conservatives abroad local groups all over the world. They are friendly, welcoming circles that do more than discuss politics. Many of our members see their local conservatives abroad group as a social network or extended family. Membership of conservatives abroad is open to all who live abroad and pledge support for the UK Conservative Party. You do not have to be a voter or a UK citizen. Um, that's an important part. Um, an individual... Um, an individual's Conservative Party membership is always linked to a constituency Conservative Association. Anyone can apply to join any Conservative Association regardless of where they live. And some 
choose to join more than one. By becoming a member of a conservative association, you also become a member of the conservative party. So notice they're saying um, you don't have to be a voter or a UK citizen and you become a member of the Conservative Party. And this is, members of the Conservative Party are the ones that vote in who becomes Prime Minister. It literally says there, a vote in the election of the party leader. You, you, so this is an admission, as we have said for a very long time, the Conservatives are not conserving any sort of English or British tradition. They are conserving the global economic hegemon, and they are expanding their constituency beyond the borders of the country they purport to govern. This is despicable. Absolutely. I, I I was so surprised to see this just stated so candidly. Well, I wonder why Rishi Sunak is uh, is trying to court the international financial markets. Could it be mm. that there are plenty of conservative members abroad who would be very happy to vote him as a prime ministerial candidate? I would love to see the breakdown of, of how many national voters vote for Liz Truss versus Rishi Sunak and how many of these conservative members abroad vote for Rishi Sunak. And it's not because of his, his ethnicity, I'm going to preempt that accusation, it is because he is a, a global financial stooge and massively interested in um, international government cooperation efforts like a global minimum corporation tax and a digital currency. So it's got nothing to do with his race, it's got to do with his terrible economic policies. So let's have a closer look at actually how people are going to vote. So I've just... Um copied this part of um, the conservatives.com website and it says qualifying members will be sent a ballot pack by post to their registered membership address. The ballot pack will contain a ballot paper that can be returned in the post. Um, many concerns about postal ballots and potential election tomfoolery. I'm not going to say Only the word. Only in the UK, of course. Yes, yeah, so it's definitely not in other countries no. that also speak English. That would never happen. Um, the pack will also contain details of how to vote online and two unique security codes that must be entered in order to do so. We recommend online voting where possible. So it does seem like at least the online voting thing, that they're, they're trying to at least give the appearance that they're um, taking the security seriously with them having to confirm codes and things like that. It's just insanely vulnerable to it is vulnerable, hacking yes. efforts. It's, it's ludicrous. But this is, again, when we looked into for my article on, on the website, my deep think on the WEF CSG program, um, the, at the time that Rishi Sunak was in government, um, uh, in the party, sorry, and prior to his work at Goldman Sachs, they were consulting on the World Economic Forum's blueprint for a digital identity. And one of the reasons for the identity was that it was going to be linked to your participation in national elections. So this is the sort of gateway to, to adopting an infrastructure of digital ID and digital manipulable elections. Mm -hmm. And it goes down to the old Stalin quote of, he who counts the ballots controls the, uh, the political power in the country. Of course, not in the USA. So it carries on. Qualifying members with a non-UK membership address will not receive a postal ballot pack. They will receive an email containing a unique secure link allowing them to vote online. So yes. Explicitly saying that if you don't live in the UK, we'll give you a code. You, you can't vote by post. Mm. But that might just be, if you're, you're taking them um, at their word, that might just be for um, logistical reasons in that if it's international post, it might take a while. Yeah, but it's, it's fraught with the ability to be hacked by nefarious actors, mm -hmm. only from Absolutely. Russia, of course. And also, why the hell should people who are not English nationals vote in our elections? Mm -hmm. it, ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous. So it's also worth mentioning that um, we've we've had many um, articles in the past saying things like evidence shows electoral fraud not a danger to British democracy. I'm well, very glad. It, it's funny that all of a sudden the, the Conservatives have such great concerns about election integrity. I mean, it's almost like the, the people that saying there is no election fraud almost have no basis to... Uh, to come to that conclusion, because how could they possibly know what's already hidden? Well, I wonder if this will come up tonight in the Sky News debate, because obviously this is from the same outlet, and they seem very committed to to this narrative. Therefore, mm -hmm. I wonder if they'll be calling the candidates conspiracy theorists. Tonight. This is from 2019, it might be worth adding. It's not mm. a recent one. Um, no, but obviously there is, a, mm -hmm. there is a track record of Sky News having unwavering faith in the integrity of British elections, mm -hmm. and I, I suppose they, they must therefore accuse the, cons uh, the Conservatives of peddling baseless conspiracy theories mm. tonight. But yes, it seems to me that in particular the postal votes are the ones that are particularly risky from what I've gathered. And on a complete, completely unrelated note, here's some BBC coverage of the US elections. 
Um, so yes, they, they say, do postal ballots lead to voting fraud? And their answer is broadly, no, it doesn't. Um, they say that postal voting is very safe. But how do you reconcile this view with the views of the Conservative Party? I mean, they're, they're saying that, well, these postal ballots may be subject to, to fraud. Well, the 100% voter turnout in retirement homes and the fact that Joe Biden got more black votes in Detroit than Barack Obama sound perfectly legitimate to me, Josh. I don't mm. know what you're talking about. So yes, um, and uh, <laughs> get a load of this. Uh, Federal Election Commission head Ellen Weintraub has said there's simply no basis for the conspiracy theory that voting by mail causes fraud. So apparently the Conservative Party and GCHQ are conspiracy theorists, according to the head of the F FEC in 2020. So there's, there's something to reconcile here, isn't there? I, I think that, well, clearly concerns about election integrity are warranted. No one wants there to be fraudulent results. But the difference in responses to both the UK, where we're a bit more open about it, just like, well, we need to solve this. You know, we, we can't, the, the vote can be rigged. And we've had many cases of finding factories where they're, printing postal ballots um, and I think there's a Labour candidate that was caught red-handed printing ballots for themselves so there's <laughs> we've got a history of it and um, yeah the, the difference between the states and here how there's, there's a complete denial that it's possible it's very interesting. I can't. I'm being very careful because I know this is going up on YouTube, so I can't say well, anything too explicit. Well, Jimmy Carter is, of course, a conspiracy theorist as well, because when his think tank said that that postal voting is is fraught with the ability for manipulation, um, that must have been entirely untrue running up to the 2020 election, because of course we know the 2020 election was the safest, most secure election in history. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, Susan, if you're watching this on at YouTube. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with that. That's very true. 100%. I believe that. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the content we have on the site, such as this article, How Nations Fail, Sri Lanka's Affair with Green Ideology. If you want to find out what else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.